What's up YouTube? It's Louis here bringing you today's cryptocurrency video. I hope everyone's well during these times. The fear and greed index hit a low of 18. Amazing, extreme fear. Just last month, not even a month ago really, but back in November we were seeing that 70 something at complete greed. So it's amazing how quickly things can change in crypto. And if you're not already in any uh, in crypto or if you're looking to enter positions into crypto, this would be the best time. So we're going to take a closer look at FIRO on the monthly time frame. If you guys remember, I told you that in my like most in-depth FIRO update, that the most key level to hold on the monthly time frame, if I put my cursor over here, but look at this purple one here, we need to stay above $6.66. Oh gosh, 666. <laughs> we basically need to stay above $6.66 on the monthly time frame. Right now, we've actually had the retest of that, which is amazing. You've come down, retested it with the bodies. We haven't closed there. Why? Because you've got 26 and a half days left. Amazing. So we've got 26 and a half days to basically hold above this. One thing that I would like to tell you guys is that over the last few years of my trading, I have noticed something. The the when a bar opens not exactly half but roughly for like the first half of the candle it will go the opposite way this is known as market manipulation the market makers want to make you think yep it's going one way when in fact it's not and it's going to go the other way why because most people have to lose most of the time that's what the market is made for most people will lose most of the time most of their money most of the time so let's go to turn on the drawings now so obviously we had this fib retracement down up from here to here your your bull market top to your bear market bottom now you can see that the one is not exactly on that because if you go to the four hour for fire it's weird it's a bit weird that um it's not exact so like on the monthly it's saying up here at 186 but if you go to the four hour it did not top out there it topped out at 170 basically and same for down here on the four hour it bottomed out 197 but over here it's telling us that it bottomed out at 192 so that's just that's just fire that's just smaller coins for you so what i have noticed on the monthly time frame are three extremely bullish patterns and remember the highest the time frame the more accurate it is now, of course, you're going to have bearish patterns on the lower time frames, but if the higher time frames are printing bullish patterns, then you know long term that it's going to do well. So first of all, we have this support over here, this ascending support. And we also have this level that I've been speaking about for weeks on end now or months on end now, $10.80. And why is that? Because it's the 382. This is the first level that you need to get above to basically start your journey to that 0618 at $30. Because when you so the first step is obviously bottoming out, getting above the, hitting the 382, holding the 236, getting above the 382, holding it as support, getting above the 050, holding it as support. And once we're above the 618, confirm it as support. And that's where the party gets started, basically. But you're like, um, yeah, the like, yeah, this, this is like basically telling you once you get above this this is like your precursor to, to you getting to the 0618 and when we do get above the 0618 minimal target is the one okay minimal target is the one so the all-time high is the minimal target so i'm going to give you some further targets but let's look at the bullish patterns that i'm seeing right now so the first one is this ascending support with this horizontal resistance at the 382 $10.82 so this over here is an ascending triangle basically and then you go, you, you can go all the way to the apex, but you don't have to. A lot of the time it doesn't. So I'm going to give you a technical target out of this. So once we break the 382 at $10.80, we've got a technical target above the 050. So it's slightly above. So what could happen is that when you break above this, you wick up to here and then fall back down to the 382. Because this is what happens anyway. You broke the 236. And why did we come back down? Because you didn't test it as support. And that's why we rolled over to it. And since then you have a low, slightly higher low. And right now we still have a higher low. Even if we just look at the wicks, low, higher low, higher low, and the bodies are higher lows. So it's amazing. So we go on a setting triangle. Not only that, we have a massive W pattern, one bottom, neckline, two bottom, and then break that and we're off basically. Similar target, similar target. So let's get that for you. It's just all the way into the bodies there. So it's just going to be slightly higher. Let's get that exact for you guys. Perfect. So the target is 
literally. So we've got two targets sitting at $19 and $21 for FIRO basically. And that takes you above that monthly 55 EMA. Look where the monthly 55 EMA is lining up with the 382. So once we get above this, it's bullish guys. I've given you two bullish patterns now that are basically telling us that we're going to break above this 55 and this 382 on the monthly time frame. So not only this, there's another bullish pattern, but they all, all three of these patterns have the same target because you're measuring from the lowest point basically. And we have this large inverse head and shoulders basically over here. So of course it's got the same target because we're measuring from here back to there. So giving us that $19 target, $19 to $21 target. So it's looking, it's looking amazing. Let's let's go to the to the weekly time frame. So on the weekly time frame, if we turn off the chart, you still haven't had a bearish cross basically. No bearish cross here, no bearish cross here. Look, you can see that the 20 is falling down to it. If it forms a bearish cross, of course, that's when I'm thinking about exiting my positions. But even if it does do the bearish cross, I want to see it hit his head on the 55. And that's when, okay, if we lose this support as well, yeah, your bear market. And I'll give you targets for that to the downside in the future. But I'm not going to give you bear market hoping right now. So because what can happen is you can come all the way to this, to the 55, and then get rejected and start going up. And this is called an EMA repel, basically. And then we'll look at this as a perfect example. You can see that they came together. They didn't do the, they didn't cross over. Let's get the chart back on. And then they didn't cross over. You were below it, but you didn't hit your head. But why? Because you didn't do the bearish cross. And then boom, nice, uh, nice shoot up to the upside. Let's see. When you got above the 55, you had a pump of 77%. And then over here, you lost it again. You had a pump of, didn't hit your head. You got a pump of 73%. So he likes doing roughly 70% pumps once it's broken back above that 55. Look at it from the low though from the low. If you were lucky, obviously I wasn't up. 287%, um, beautiful. And then from that low, which was back in July to where we are now, still up 113%. I got in. So when I initially got into Fire Road, I didn't put a lot of money in. I first got in in and around, uh, where is it? I got in quite high to be honest guys. I think I got in around here. But then when it came down to 750, uh, 750, either here or here this is where i started going in heavy into fire basically so with this ascending uh support you've been back testing as support ever since back test back test back test back test but you haven't back tested it yet so if we do roll over one more time we could come to this ascending support basically and this is what i want to see held so one thing that we can take a note of is that this is a swing high and this is a swing low. We haven't broken that low, so we're going to take that as the low, basically. So I'm going to measure from here back down to here because you've gone up, you've retraced, you found your low, and now we're uh, um, basically working our way through the FIB levels, the key levels of support and resistance. So I'm going to take away the, the moving averages because we're in sort of consolidation. What I do like about this consolidation period here is, remember, usually I say we don't want to use the the EMAs in a consolidation zone. Why? Because it does multiple bullish and bearish crosses, but we're not getting that. So this is what I like right now, because you're not getting multiple bearish, bullish and bearish crosses. At the moment, you're still in this bullish cross from down here to 20, uh, at, uh, from 2021, uh, 8th of March, basically. So I'm going to turn off the indicators now and look at the chart for just price action, basically. So right now you're below that 382. We want to now see a daily close above. So after today, we want to see Fira get back above the 686, $6.86. If you don't, of course, and hit your head, we, we have that chance to roll over. Let me check where this 236 two, is. So yeah, look at that for amazing confluence. If we do roll over, I'm expecting Fira to hold this ascending support, which we've been back testing since 2020, March 2020 the C dump. So since then, you've been back testing that support with every dip apart from this one. So if we were to roll over, that is my target basically for the rollover. And this is where I want to see held as support. We can wick down to it before getting uh, back above. We would like to close above this support. But if you do lose that, as long as you're above this low over here, you're still printing higher lows basically. Because look, I bet loads of people are saying, oh, look, you've got a low, you've got lower low, you've got lower low. But it's all about the macro perspective, the longer term perspective, basically. So we want to get above the 382 at $6.86. And that's when we start working our way through the fibs, basically. At the moment, one thing that the fibs is doing at the moment is using it as what it should be, a retracement tool. So you first have a push 
and then you retrace to the 618 and that's from there you're meant to continue the trend and you can see that the the wave to the downside is much larger than the wave to the upside so this is actually potentially a downtrend so what should happen from here is that you should actually come down and lose this low and then you form this large abc wave basically and that yeah that would be a bear market because you're losing your march low basically and we don't want that at all however guys as long as you don't lose three dollars over here then we won't continue down so that's like the worst case if you lose three dollars that's your bear market but we do want to see this hold basically because if you lose that that's your precursor that you're going to come down here and from here you can create this large double bottom but getting down there already is very risky because you're already breaking that july low that we made earlier on in the year so we do not want to lose that basically and if you do we know what's going to happen so we don't want to lose that we can come down roll over to here hold it get back above the 382 work our way through the fibs basically so i'm going to give you some targets as long as you don't lose the zero and you can get back above uh, hold this level hold this level especially then we will attempt to break the 618 back test that support which is the level that we've all been shouting about for weeks ten dollars eighty to eleven dollars thirty and if we go back to the monthly time frame that's exactly where your 55 monthly ema is and this you don't want to keep hitting your head on this basically because that's going to eventually send us below the 20. so we can obviously get to it and then reject it one more time and get back above but we basically don't want to keep hitting our head on it because that's like a precursor to the fact that you're going to break this low and then if you do lose this that's your bear market basically so i'm going to go back to the weekly turn off the emas and i'm going to give you your targets and you already know the targets, but I'm just going to reiterate them. So as long as we can work our way through these fibs, get above that the major key level of $10.80, because that's also your larger 382, then we will head to that 1618 over here at $93. And this is probably going to be my, my target for the bull market, like a minimal target. I do think that we can get up there, implying that we do break above this 0618. Because once we break above this 0618 at, let's say, 1080 to 1130, this is where we get the party started because I've given you that inverse head and shoulders. I've given you the ascending triangle and I've given you the double bottom over here, basically. And so they've all got targets at in and around 19 to $21, this zone over here. And that's taken us almost back to the one. So once you're above this, you're going to retrace to the one minimal. So like a minimal 25, I do think that we, if we do break 25, confirm that as support then we are going to head to that 1618 and when you're above the, the 1618 over here so when you get to the 1618 you're already above this larger 0618 when we measure the top of the bull market over here to the bear market bottom over here so as long as you're above that you're actually retracing to the top and look what's near the top basically the two fib at 210 so it's highly likely that if you get above the 0.618, we are going to go to the 2.10, basically. And look where your larger 1.272 is, 567. And just above the 2, and just below that, out of this impulsive wave, you got the 2.272 at $374, and you got the 2.414 at $500. So it could be that you work your way through the fibs, get to that 1618 maybe have a nice drop before heading over to these targets basically up here so i'm gonna say minimal for me 93 dollars if of course if i'm wrong then it's probably only gonna be 25 it just all depends how long this cycle is gonna last but i do think once we get above 10 dollars 80 it's gonna start moving very quickly guys so that's all your patterns to the upside i'm gonna go to the daily time frame so we're going to ignore all of these moving averages. I want to show you the daily because I want to show you the RSI. Um, was it the daily or the weekly? So yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's the daily time frame. Perfect. So on the daily, we have a low right here with the bodies over here, but you wick down there. Is it? Oh no, no, sorry guys, my mistake. I'm meant to be looking at this area over here. Sorry about that. So we have this low over here with your wick down here. This is your low. You made a lower high and then a lower low down here with your wicks down here touching this. Um. Oh, that's just a drawing. <laughs> so you got your, your wick down here and a lower low basically with the bodies and with the wicks. But on the chart, on the RSI, sorry, you're actually printing 
a low and a higher low. So this is hidden bullish divergence, basically. So it doesn't mean, oh yeah, tomorrow we're going to fly up. But over the next weeks, we should start uh, re uh, retracing back to the upside because over here you're having lower lows and over here you're having higher lows. So this level down here is $31 and this level over here is $35. Perfect, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's update. Please go follow my Twitter, Louis underscore crypto. That's where I've been posting multiple updates. I was even live during the dip at 5 a.m. yesterday. So that's where you're going to get multiple updates from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, peace.